Right, now we're getting to the cover page. Now, um, the cover page we are going to do on the insert tab now just so you know if your um, ribbon is hidden like this you can just double click on any of the names and then it'll show the ribbon again okay so we're just going to double click and then we've got it again we're going to choose a cover page here on the pages tab and don't worry if everything looks bland at the moment um, we're going to choose a nice theme for you after you've chosen a cover page and we've changed our heading styles so for now just go and have a look at what cover page suits your fancy and um, then we can get going on putting in the content okay so the um, information that we need on our cover page is as follows um, it's at the bottom of page 13 it tells us here it just lists four bullets but it's actually five items um, name and surname I would put that in you, you'll see here it tells us we need to put it in appropriate content controls um, now content controls are these little things okay these why does it not show me that now hold on there you go these things are content controls okay I'll show you how to work with them just now um, so we need to put the um, information in appropriate content controls so name and surname I would think goes into author um, name of your school works well in company um, the subject name, you can put in subject, <laughs> uh, pet topic, um, that's the topic or the aspect that you chose that good, that works well in the title because that's like the big title of your report. And then we need to put in a content control for the abstract, which you're not going to be able to fill in now. That's basically like, I can all, almost call it like an executive summary. You'll see if you've started looking through the research that was provided, um, for you, uh, by the pet uh, in, in the patch folder you'll see a lot of them actually has an abstract at the bot at the top and if you read the abstract you, you can't know what what you're getting into right from the start so you're not going to fill that in yet but that's one of the things we need to put in already okay so for the content control let's quickly have a look at how to do that so just a little um, theory about how content controls work and how cover pages work cover pages are made up of shapes so um, this is a, a big shape at the back uh, that was filled with a gradient fill. This is another shape, um, another shape. Uh, so if you want to put in more shapes and you want to put something in a different place, you can't just go and click anywhere and do that. You actually have to put in a text box. Okay, draw a text box and then you can um, uh, edit that text box and do things like take the fill away, um, take the outline away and then you can put in extra content controls for example if you wanted to put something else over here um, you can put in insert the content controls you always find under the text group and it's over here under quick parts um, so if you chose a cover page that for example doesn't have uh, an abstract you can just go to document property and here you'll find all the um, the content controls that you need an abstract author company um, uh, subject and a title so let's say I need an abstract you'll see it's given me one there so it's not like I'm going to type in anything there now but I've got the content control to type it in later so that I don't forget okay so um, please fill in everything except an abstract now oh and if you want to put in something else um, uh, and you're struggling to move around in here you'll see you can't um in you can't press enter and you can't move down in a text box unless you press your arrow keys to first move out of a content control then only you can press enter to move down in a text box so please go ahead and fill in the cover page as far as you can with those five pieces of information just to remind you that's what we're looking for norm and fun norm from your school name and surname name of your school subject name and pet topic pet topic is the one that you're going to put nice and big in the document title because that's our main title for the document okay now we're ready to start making it look pretty okay so um, i'm going to talk about the picture just now but let's just first um, make our headings stand out and then we can have a look at um, a theme now the headings are not all at the same level now i don't know if you recall but in grade 11 you learned about styles okay now styles over here we get heading ones those are main headings 
let me just click here somewhere those are main headings and heading two um is a subheading okay um, and then once you've chosen a heading two then it goes um to a, then it allows you to choose a heading three now a very common mistake that i see people making is they want the font smaller so then they jump from a heading one to a heading three but that's not correct because we actually want to tell the computer this is a subheading. You can't just immediately jump from a main heading to a sub subheading. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So if you do, if you want the, the style to look different, you actually need to modify the style and change the font settings. Um, please, if you want to change font settings and styles, um, just go and have a look at the addendum right at the bottom here, uh, at page 55. It gives you a guideline of what um, what fonts uh, are appropriate, what um, sizes are appropriate, and that kind of thing. Preferably, I, I just usually find that if you just stick to the styles the way they are given to you, that's, the, that's just the safest way to go. All right, so you now need to figure out which of these are main headings and which of these are subheadings. Okay, please go ahead and apply heading styles to all of your headings, thinking logically what would be main headings and what would be subheadings. Right, just one thing you need to take notes of, please, is if you were um, selecting all of these, that your screenshots can't be in a heading style. That has to be in a normal style, okay? Otherwise, it's going to show up in your table of contents. Right, now that you can see what your document's starting to look like, um, I'm just going to make one of these full screen. It's nice to actually see them both on one page so that you can um, really get a feel for the theme that you're going to choose. If you don't see them both on one page, you can use your view tab and choose multiple table, multiple pages. Okay, now we're going to design and now you can choose a different theme. So have a look at the different themes that are available and choose one that works for you, that, that you like. And even if you've chosen something and you're not quite keen on the colors, you can go and change the colors over here. Um, you can set up a custom color scheme. You'll see I've got a few custom color schemes over there. Um, let's say you like reds um, and you don't like the font that they've chosen, then you can choose different fonts over here. It's, it's completely up to you. Go choose one that fits your fancy. And then once you've chosen those two, you can even go and customize it even more with one of these built-in style sets and have a look whether you like one of these more. Um, for some reason, it's not auto um, updating for me now. But uh, yes, there you go. You can have a look and see what you like the most. Okay, now we're going to have a look at the picture. Now, the picture is not an absolute requirement. Um, this depends on your teacher, how they're going to mark in phase three. In phase three, um, you'll see here at the bottom, there's a mark that says graphics from other sources uh, are clearly and appropriately acknowledged. Now, personally, a graphic from phase two is not a, a graphic for me from another source. So I prefer students to actually put in a, a graphic from an external source. Um, and what makes that nice is then, um, then we actually have a, a proper graphic that we can use in our website already. Okay, now just a little bit of theory knowledge for you over here. Did you know um, one gets an organization called Creative Commin Commons? Now, Creative Commons is actually a, a non-profit organization and they help you um, with different licenses. We, that enables you to share your content where you can tell others whether they are allowed to read, change it or whether they're just allowed to use it for free or whether they are allowed to use it for commercial purposes so they can make money out of it or whatever you like them to do it. So if you say share your work over here, you can actually choose a license and custom make the license conditions and put that on whatever you've made, whether it's a picture, a t-shirt, a song or whatever. So what we're aiming to do here is we want to use Creative Commons pictures so that we don't actually um, use any images that's not our legal right to use. There's nothing on earth that bothers me as much as opening a project, not just yours, but anything where I see pictures with watermarks, which means somebody used a picture they were supposed to pay for. Okay, so let's see how to do that. We're going to find pictures online that's um, free of copyright. So that's in Pixabay. 
and in free pick because we're using it for non-commercial reasons. If we were using it for commercial, we might have had to pay. We might have had to pay. Right, so I'm going to show you how to save these. Um, I'm also just going to I'm just going to search for a generic word like computer, and over here, same search here, computer. Obviously, you're going to search something that has to do with your topic or your aspect that you chose. Um, not you're not going to use sponsored images because here you have to actually pay for it and you're going to get watermarks so no sponsored images you're just going to look for the free ones okay this looks like a nice picture I'm going to open it up and um, you'll see here it tells me free for commercial use wow and no attribution required so I actually technically don't even have to attribute but I'm going to have to do it for the pet so um, because I'm not going to use it in a very high resolution, I can just right click and copy the image. But um, in your phase three, you might want to use it uh, at a higher resolution. So you can rather download it um, in a nice, good quality, download and go save it um, in your, I would save it probably in my folder three website folder. Do your uh, capture and then you can download your picture. Now that you have your picture, you need to copy the URL. This is extremely important. So copy the URL. And let's go and have a look at how to put this um, in my document. So let's say I'm going to use this on this page. Um, it's best to do the images on the second page and then just move it up to the top one. So I'm going to insert the picture that I've just downloaded. I'm going to change it to a tight wrapping so that I can move it up. Uh, and I'm going to make it a bit smaller and then I will right click and insert a caption. Now on the caption I'll say something like, because this is an Afrikaans one, so I'll say fun and then I'm going to paste the URL. And there you go, I've got my picture and I've got the attribution correct. Let's have a look at how to do that on Pixabay, uh, on FreePick. FreePick is a little bit more difficult. Um, but they've got a lot more images. So let's say I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to try to use one that you'll, you'll see is a bit more difficult. So let's use this one because this one's going to download as a zip folder. So I'm going to download it. Uh, attribution is required if I'm not paying. So that's fine. Free download. Okay. You'll see here it downloads it as a zip folder. So I'm going to save it as, I'm just going to save it under my downloads for now. Okay. And uh, I'll do the copy and attribute so long so that I have that in my memory. And now I have to go to the folder. Now to extract a zip folder, you're going to right click and choose extract all. Um, in normal windows, it just looks like right click extract all as well. It asks you where you want to extract this to this whole part at the back. Um, is going to be another folder. So I'm just going to go browse and put it in the folder where I want it. Um, I don't want it in a subfolder, so I'm just going to choose website and extract. So now I have that. I'm going to insert it here. I've actually put the English in the Afrikaans and the Afrikaans in the English, but that doesn't matter. I'll swap them around now. It's that one. Okay. Uh, make it a bit smaller and I'm going to change it to square. And now I can move it up. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can even do something like removing the background. You can see if that works nicely. Ooh, that works. Okay. And then I'm going to add my caption. Okay. Now my caption can't be a million lines long. Okay. So I'm just going to use the part between the anchor tags. Remember in um, grade 11, we started doing links. Hey, so, um, you can choose whether you're going to put the whole URL in uh, or you're just going to put the part that says hand create hand vector created by this part. I think I'm just going to put in that. Um, so without the anchor tags, because we're not actually making a link. Eh? So I'm just going to put in that. So everything that doesn't have the anchor tags, um, that's, that's a proper attribution. That's how they want me to attribute it. And then you can format that nicely just so that everything looks good and put it on your page wherever you want it so that it looks nice and pretty. All right, that's our cover page complete and we are ready to start our document. 
let's just see where our marks are at now. You'll see we've actually not worked in phase one at all now. Um, we've done phase three, the graphics from another source, um, and we've done a, a cover page, appropriate content controls. Um, we just haven't done a meaningful as abstract yet, but that's fine. We've done headings that stand out clearly. We've got styles, we've got different levels of headings, and we've got heading styles to ensure that headings are formatted consistently. So we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. And even though we've worked in phase three now, th that's work that's done.